Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Manchester United Valencia, both sides starting their domestic league seasons very poorly, but this was an opportunity to get it right. How did they perform? Why did both sides struggle? Don't worry, here are the interviews we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're gonna break down the nil-nil draw between Manchester United and Valencia. So before we get into the game, don't forget to click the thumbs up button below if you do like this video. Don't forget to also click the bell at the bottom to ensure that you get daily updates to our new videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see organic, unfiltered soccer slash footy analysis. But let's get to the game. In today's video, we're going to break down the first half, see how both sides fared, what systems they used, what went right, what went wrong. Then we're going to get to the second half to see how Manchester United looked to try and gain three points but first let's get to the lineups we have Manchester United in a 4-3-3 Rashford Lukaku and Alexis Sanchez up front in midfield they went with Fellaini and they went with Paul Pogba ahead of Nemanja Matic then Marcelino's Valencia 4-4-2 what they do have is Rodrigo and Nishibashuai up front out in wider areas they went with Gwedge and they went with Coquelin and in midfield Parejo and Kondogbia so first let's get into the first half to see how both sides look to approach the game. So first, let's start with United. We have United here in the 4-3-3. You have Valencia dropping off into two banks of four. They have the front players sitting on Matic. And then in midfield, it's Parejo. And they have Kondogbe against Fellaini and Pogba. They have the wider players tucking in a bit narrow. More so Coughlin, who is specifically on the right to ensure that Luke Shaw wouldn't be able to bomb forward. However, the two players on the wings in Gwedge and Coughlin often interchange positions. If one went to the left, the other went to the right and vice versa. So that was what they were trying to do. And with United trying to go forward, they didn't really create any chances based off the fact that they were very um, lethargic in their play, very slow, no real fluidity, unlike Valencia. But they did have some chances. They did find some gaps. The first gap they did find was mostly down the left hand side we had Shaw playing the ball out to Rashford most of the times we had Coughlin or we had Gwedge dropping off to make sure it was a 1v2 but there were times where they were able to get it into a 1v1 the first big opportunity you see the ball go out to Rashford he's able to run at Piccini what happens here is that Lukaku makes an intelligent run to drag Garay out of position and allows him to go 1v1 and he flashes a shot inches wide and we thought that that was leave that meant that things were going Going to go forward for Manchester United in that regard. However, when you think about the other opportunity that they do get this time, it's just very simple. It's Coughlin dropping in there. And what happens is that Rashford drops into that position ahead of Piccini to the left of Coughlin and he picks up the ball. No one presses him. Parejo eventually gets out there. He's able to turn and fire a tame effort on goal. But again, not enough from Rashford, not enough 1v1s, not enough overloads, not really playing as part, somewhat similar to Martial. We'll get to the Martial later in the second half. But here, not much going on for him. The other aspect was what is Roman Lukaku doing? Not getting enough service from Fellaini or Pogba, not enough guile, not enough creativity in the final third. Valencia's line was pretty good in the sense that they did drop off in those two banks and the midfield and the defensive bank were very tight with one another so there wasn't much space to get the ball in between the lines. When Lukaku was pivotal was when he moved out into the wider areas. A lot of people were questioning why he did that. More so in the first half, you look at it, if he could run at Gaia, Lukaku isn't a bad dribbler for his frame and his size so him to go 1v1 against Gaia not a bad idea him peeling out to Gaia to win aerial duels not a bad idea and considering he's not getting service in the central areas that is a big problem when he did a lot of it came from more transitional play we think about Fellaini winning the ball in midfield Alexis able to drive a bit forward. He's able to play the pa play pass into Lukaku, who drops off and links with Pogba, who tries to slide in Rashford into between that space with Piccini, but Piccini was able to intervene. So that was one opportunity for him. But the other opportunities that stem from Lukaku really being involved stem down the right-hand side. There was one play in particular where you had Alexis Sanchez drag Gaia out of position. He pulls out, drags him out of position, slides it to Matic, Mishibashuai tries to get across, but Matic is able to rip 
to evade his challenge. And we see Lukaku drift into that space with Gaia out of there. The ball is slid into him. He's able to run across where Gabriel is there. The first time they met earlier on in the in the half, Gabriel was intervened. But here he was able to beat Gabriel, but his cross into the box was cleared by the Valencia defense. That was one warning sign. And then the other breakdown that they really had, and this is where they were really creating their chances, just from simple breakdowns and just simple movement. But it seems that whenever United have the ball, there's not enough off the ball movement. This is where they miss Lingard in particular, where they could get something, not enough creativity. Perhaps Mata could have offered something, but it was just very dull, very static. And the players just didn't look like they were really into the game. But the final chance, you see it's another breakdown where you have Pogba just sliding in between Coquelin and in behind um, Rodrigo. And what happens here is that you have the ball and Pog was able to the ball Pog was able to pick up the ball in between them and then Pereo comes out he's able to beat him gain a bit of yards drop it off to Lukaku who then we see the run still being continued by Luke Shaw and what happens there Lukaku was able to slide that into him but the cross into the box is blocked and United are unable to really test Neto but when you think about it as a whole again Valencia's shape was good but United weren't really getting much going forward they didn't have Valencia or Shaw push forward as much as they would want to given the fact that they have the threat of Gwedish and they have the threat of Rodrigo who are able to bomb into that space so they attacked when they could and the other factor is is that with Matic sitting a bit deeper and the United midfield marked out of the game they weren't really creating any chances not enough crosses in from wide areas Lukaku getting involved sporadically and this didn't look good for Manchester United but now we have to get to Valencia and see what they did to cause United a few issues in the first half. So we get to Valencia in their first half and what they did it right, we have to look at United's shape, often dropping off in a 4-5-1, but when they started the first half, they looked to press from the front. They had Lukaku and most likely Fellaini, sometimes Pogba looking to press up against the center backs, the wide players pushing out to the Valencia fullbacks. They had Pogba and Matic sitting on Pereiro and Kondogbia, and then they had Shaw and Valencia pushing out to the wider players and the center backs dealing with the strikers. Seemed like a good plan, but could United sustain that it didn't really last long they ended up eventually dropping into a 4-5-1 and the biggest problem here is that they weren't closing down spaces quick enough and Valencia were able to have some good possession of play that they often for the most part did squander but they did create more chances than United and probably should have tested David De Gea when you think about it they drop into that 4-5-1 and what happens here is that Gabriel and Garay are able to build from the back because they have a 2v1 against Lukaku you have Pogba and Fellaini sitting in central midfield and they don't interchange positions. So even if Parejo and Kondogbia do, they stick to their man that's closest to them on their side of the pitch. And then you have Matic. And the biggest problem with Matic here is the fact that Rodrigo and Mishi look to drop into pockets of space in between them. So often what happened was that they would overload the midfield with those runners. And it's the fact that Smalling and Baye didn't always press and, hold, and kind of hold them back and drop out with them into midfield. Obviously, if one drops out, that could lead to a 1v1 or allow the other striker to drop into that space and attack it. Here, that wasn't the case. And what happened was that at First, we saw Mishi often being tracked by Bai, but as the game wore on, they were able to drop off to either side of Matic and really dictate the play that way to ensure that Valencia kept the ball. But when you think about the way Valencia would attack, you look at the right side, Coughlin is a central midfielder, so he's not really going to run at Luke Shaw. He's there to negate Luke Shaw's threat, and Pacini's not going to go 1v2 against Shaw and Rashford with the threat of being overrun on the counterattack. However, on the left-hand side, you have here... Gaia and you have Guedish that are looking to run at Valencia and Alexis Sanchez. Alexis Sanchez not renowned for tracking back as often as he normally does do and you look at Guedish and he's going to try and run at Valencia and the fact that you could have Mishi tuck in there, you could have Rodrigo push out there, there were potential chances for overloads when you really break it down. So that is one route that they could look to attack and they did often attack that way. The problem with Valencia is that when United drop off into that shape, they have two strikers that do the same thing. They don't have any runners bombing in. If you have Mishi dropping off, you want Rodrigo to 
tuck into that space. If you have Rodrigo dropping off, you'd want Mishi to charge in behind. That wasn't happening. It happened against Juventus. It happened here. They could have all the possession in the world, but it was very easy for United and De Gea, who never was really tested because they never got in behind the space that United were protecting. So that was the threat. But here, they did have threats on the break. They were looking to overload. You think about the first chance that they really do get, and it's Guedes running at Valencia. What happens here is we already see the first set of them looking to expose Alexis Sanchez. Sanchez is narrow. Gaia immediately darts by him. Alexis catches it late, but he does track him. The ball is played into that left half space. What happens now is that Guy is able to hold them off, deliver the cross into the box, but Smalling is there to intervene. We've seen that from Smalling throughout the game. He was probably United's best player, if not one of the two, and he made a key intervention cross after cross after cross, and United were able to cope with that. You think about another opportunity is Condogbia switching the play out to Valencia, or out to Gwedge, who holds off Valencia. What you have here is Mishi looking to dart into that space. He runs off Fellaini. No one tracks the run. Fellaini, the ball, you see Guedes able to play the reverse pass into Mishi Bashuai driving into that space. His cross is then delivered and it's eventually cleared. But again, warning side, they're making those runs into that space and behind Valencia. They're really causing them problems. And that is where United really need to fix up. You think about when they tried to press, there was one instance in particular where they try to press from the front and you have a defender out here in Gabriel and you have Lukaku looking to step to him. But what happens here is that Kondogbia moves into that space between between Alexis and between, um, well, what happens here is that you have Alexis looking to track him and then you have Kondogbia tuck in, he makes a 3v2, and he's able to play that pass into Kondogbia Gabriel. So Gabri so now Kondogbia gets it, Fellaini's looking to step to him, but what already happens now is the fact that with Alexis pressing out, Guy is free, you see Guedes pull out Valencia, you see Mishi end it, ending up to pull out Bailly. What happens now is that the pass is played into Guedes, who dips it off to Gaia, and now we have the run. He makes the run off Matic now for Gwedge. Gwedge makes the run into that space. Ball is clipped over by Gaia into Gwedge. What happens now is that he's able to run and often make a, an offer an offensive threat, but again, that's another breakdown from the pressing that Valencia were able to cause. Again, we think about just simple plays that United, just simple breakdowns that are not working out in their favor. Valencia looking to break forward on the attack, looking to step forward. And what happens here is that Alexis gets the ball, trying to play it to Pogba. It's misplaced. It falls to Rodrigo, who's able to play it out to Mishi, who drags Matic with him. And what happens here is that Fellaini and by step. Valencia is already high. Mishi is able to clip that ball into to the space for, again, Gwedge, who drives forward. What happens here is that we have Matic coming across, he's able to cut in on Matic, but Alexis tracks as well, and Alexis makes the block. Big warning sign. You look at another United breakdown, there were plenty, and that is the problem here, is that they were just really sluggish without the ball. They were able, they were closing down space for Valencia. Valencia was able to push forward. You want to see another breakdown? We have Garay stepping forward. No one's pressing him because, again, they have the 2v1. So we have Garay stepping forward with a 2v1. Garay steps forward. Eventually, Pogba does step out to him. So when Pogba steps out to him, what happens here is that we have Nishi drop off. He drags out um, Smalling. Now the pass is played into Kondogbia. Where, that is where Pogba should be, but he's pressing Garay. Passes into Kondogbia, who's able to get across from Fellaini. Now you have Rodrigo making the run to drag Bailly out into that space. And what happens here is the run is pushed out to Gwedge. We have the overlap. And what happens here is that the overlap isn't played. He's able to cut in and he fires a shot that Alexis Sanchez does block. Again, we see a is doing the dirty work. We see another play down towards the end, and this time we have the Gaia overlap again, but he cuts in Gwedge and he bends his effort over the net. When you break it down as a whole, you think about Valencia. United weren't really being threatened the fact that they were being outplayed in open play because 
Valencia couldn't get in behind them. But they're finding the threat down the left-hand side. They had the overloads. United without the ball, whether they were pressing or when they decided to press, Valencia were able to pick them apart with their passing. And that is where United were being harmed. And they were fortunate not to be down. And they were very fortunate that Valencia didn't test David De Gea, which is a testament to the issues that Valencia currently possess. It is a systematic thing. It is a personnel thing that Marcelino needs to fix. But going into the second half, United had to find a way to stop Valencia from attacking this way and themselves had to find a way to test Neto. So then we get to the second half. We have United pushing to get the win at Old Trafford. They haven't been playing well. Mourinho's job's on the line. Juve is looking to run away with the group. They want to win at home. So what do they do? They start pressing from the front on goal kicks. They have Lukaku pressing out. They have Alexis stepping out to the center forward. They have Pereo dropping off. And what happens there is that Pereo drops off, so Fellaini steps to him. What happens now if the ball goes to the left, you have Pogba shifting over, and then you would have Rashford, and you have Matic step into the midfield. Rashford's pick up his man. Then the fullbacks push forward if the ball pushes out to the right hand side what you would have there is that Rashford would stick onto his man you have Pogba push out and then you have Matic step to the free man in midfield and the defenders would push up as they please but when you think about the second half Valencia didn't really have many chances the one big chance they did have and it stemmed from where Pogba was coming across and he got buckled and it was a very disappointing moment for him but he gets buckled Pacini's able to beat him Pacini's able to deliver a cross into the box and we see Rodrigo get across to to get away from Smalling and then the ball or get away from the defender and the ball is pushed out to Mishi who should do better. He fires his shot over the net from point blank range. But when you look at it as a whole, that was one of their better chances. That was the only real chance they had to test David De Gea. But for the most part, they were dropping off in their two banks of four. They were very organized. The defensive bank was like I once again tight with the midfield bank. So there wasn't enough space for them to really push forward in between the lines and that was a big problem but the way United really counteracted was that Paul Pogba started to get more involved in the play think about the free kick that really set things off for him where he forced Neto to push the ball over the net he, he combined with Alexis Sanchez which led almost led to an opportunity but they couldn't get the final ball we push Valencia a bit higher and what happens here is that from the break Pogba wins the ball in midfield he ends up sliding it between the center backs so he slides the ball between the center backs for Lukaku. Lukaku was able to pick it up in the left channel or the right channel. He cuts in and Lukaku forces Neto into a save. Pogba was everywhere in the sense that he, although he his body language looked lethargic. He was being very impactful. He had a throw in from Shaw. He throws it into Pogba. This is after Gamero had come on and he came on as a substitute. What happens here is that he's able to spin Gamero and he spins him and he sees Lukaku making the run across Garay. Gar Lukaku is able to bring it down. Neto comes out. He pulls off Garay, fires the shot on goal. It's pushed away. But again, with United, it was just the fact that Valencia's shape. It was very organized there was no real creativity you feel like they need someone to just kind of spearhead them forward Pogba like I said one of the biggest gripes he takes a lot of touches on the ball that is a big issue and again they just weren't really creating enough chances here Valencia sat off when they tried to get the two two v ones they had the wider players tucking in to ensure that they were able to cope with that no real overloads down that side for Manchester United when you think about the chances that they could have the players that they could bring off the bench to really make a difference they brought on Martial as their sole substitute player Martial comes on for Alexis Sanchez who wasn't really good and they switch sides so Rashford moves out to the right Martial moves out to the left he wasn't really getting going because again they couldn't they weren't able to get him behind the defense his one real opportunity he was able to run at Pacini cut outside and he's fouled at the edge of the box was eventually leads to Rashford bending his free kick from that awkward angle off the crossbar when you think about the second half Pogba was really involved Valencia didn't really get going they were still kind of playing the same way dropping off the the center forwards looking to get Gwedge in behind Valencia but with you not with United pushing forward there weren't really any signs of counter-attacking threats but when Gwedge was played into very good positions his decision making often let him down if his decision making was on point perhaps Valencia win this game there were a few chances in the second half where he's able to break in behind after com combining with Rodrigo but again it was about United trying to push forward they had their opportunities through Pogba they were un unable to convert and again this is 
a big issue for United. How are they going to create chances? Can they get better under Jose Mourinho whereas for, Len for Valencia? Now they have to rely on United to lose against Juventus and take care of young boys and then win their game against United at home if they want to get out of this group. But they need to be better than this. And the same can be said for Manchester United. But let me know what you guys think. Which one of these two teams will get out of the group? Is it Manchester United? Can they fix their issues under Mourinho? Do they need a new coach? And what about Valencia? Can't they play Gamero up front? What are they going to do to fix their issues in terms of scoring goals? Because with two strikers dropping off deep and no one running in behind, it just doesn't seem like it's going to work. Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And don't forget that if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.